right. Your last home game, can you, does it seem like it's gone by fast? This year? Yeah. No. Uh, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, some years do fly by. Uh, this one's had a little bit more. There's been some weeks I wish would have gone by a little bit quicker than other weeks, but it's still been a fun year. I mean, uh, I'm not saying that at all, but there, there's, there's been more going on this year. And certainly the last regular season game is upon us, and, and it always goes by fast. Uh, uh, but it seems like maybe this year, maybe not quite as fast as some of the prior ones. <laughs> Bill, does it give you more of an edge this year in postseason, the fact that you didn't win the, the tournament and, and, and be able to kind of this team making its own mark later? Uh, you know what, uh, Dave, I, I don't know. I've always thought we were pretty motivated going to the tournament. I, I think we, I think of the, the 14 times we've won the league, I think eight times we've won the tournament, uh, 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 something like that. So, you know, we always said when we won the league, now it's time to go validate what you just did. And, you know, we, we don't get a chance to say that. But I, I think our guys will certainly be as motivated as, as, they, as they ever have been, uh, without question. But I'm not sure it's going to be more so than past years. We've had some pretty competitive teams in the past that, you know, love to win no matter what the situation was. And, and uh, uh, this, this team will, will be fired up. But the one thing about tournaments that's so good is it's new life for everybody. It's a fresh start. Everybody has a, everybody has a chance. Everybody has an opportunity. And, so no, and then people are playing for high stakes, even though, you know, we could be playing for a seed. Another team could be playing for to validate. Another team could be playing uh, for entrance into the tournament or for postseason or in some form or fashion, whatever. So, so everybody's got something to play for this time of year. Do you think Dunk will be a better player having not played in the hands than he's given by simply observing? Do you think he'll be even better next year? No. No, I, 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 I don't see how you can be better by just sitting and observing. Now, if, if, if he could do anything with his hand, right. you know, he, guys, he's still got the screw in his hand. He, he, he's going to take his cast off, except he, he can't even take his cast off when he walks to class as long as there's ice on the sidewalks yeah. because there's always a risk that he could fall, slip or do something. So, so it's, I mean, absolutely zero contact. I mean, the only thing he can, as of today, the only thing he can do with his cast off is walk. So, so, uh, so, I, you know, I, I don't see how guys get better. Uh, now they could get better because of, uh, in, he's limited in the weight room. He, there's so many things uh, that he has been so limited on that it'd be hard to get better. I think, I think what you'd be hoping for, Tom, would be maintaining. And, and uh, so, but he'll be a better player next year than he, than he would have been this year. Not because of that, just because he'd be a year older and, and he's still really young. But but uh, you know I I doubt we're going to get a chance to witness that though. Do you even visit with those guys about that already? Or no, you know? no, I haven't talked to one person about anything past this season uh, at all. Uh, and and uh, I will when the season's over. But it, 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 you know this it's no reason to do that right now in my eyes. What sets the field house apart on game day? Uh, you know, the field, we, we, we get a lot of uh, uh, credit uh, for having the best home court that we do. And there's two reasons why we have the best home court. Is, is because, uh, uh, A, we're, we're, our, our, we're, we're closer at capacity every game. Okay, that, that, that's, and, and there's a history of that. But B, everybody talks about a home court and it takes, takes away from, well, we, we've got really good players. You know, the, the best home courts are the ones that have the best players playing on it. The hardest places to win are when we go against the other teams. The other teams got a better five than you. Those are the hardest places to win. And, and, and I, I give our fans, and, and I always do, give them a ton of credit for, for being the sixth man and help pull us through. But, but we've had some pretty hard rocking cats out there over the years as well. So, so I don't think it's just based on you know, the fact we're playing on in Allen Fieldhouse on James Naismith Court. I, I think that's part of it. But I also think we, we've had some pretty good players too. Had some really good teams obviously slip up and maybe lose a game here. But what would it mean for this team to, to pull off kind of a perfect record at home? Yeah, I think that I think that's one thing that we can look at is motivation to, to be able to 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 run the table at home. Uh, uh, and we had we put ourselves in opportunity. You know, last year I, you know, we lost three at home last year, and uh, and that was a Final Four team. Uh, uh, Lost three at home, and and, and uh, if I'm not mistaken, the last home loss was it a uh, was it Oklahoma State or was it Texas Tech? It was Oklahoma State. So so to think that 
that right now, I don't know where we rank nationally for the longest home winning streaks. Third. We're third in the country right now. What's the longest one? 26, Tennessee. Tennessee, and what are, what are we at? 20. We're at 20. So, so to think in, in just one year that we could be the third longest winning streak at home is, 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 is pretty good. Now, we, we won, but we went 69 one time straight at home, and, and uh, you know, so we've had some pretty good runs. But for this team to, to run the table would be great. And, and Baylor has been, you know, they, they, they've been nipping at her at us pretty hard uh, the last several games we've played them at home. They've, they've always come ready to play, and Scott's done a great job this year. They had a tough loss last night, but he's done a marvelous job considering all this crap they've dealt with too. But, uh, uh, but yeah, that would mean a lot for this team to run the table at home. Those two results last night, wasn't that, I mean, West Virginia and Oklahoma State both winning, it's kind of an indication of what a wild year this, this conference has been? Yeah, you know, yes, but it's, it seems like to me it's wild every year. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, it, I think it's been a wild year. And, and I also think that uh, uh, West Virginia is a heck of a lot better than the record. And I, I think Oklahoma State, I mean, guys, they, they, they uh, could have easily won Tech, even though they played great to put it in overtime. They could have easily beat us in Stillwater. And then that game last night was the same game as the other two. It's just they made, they made all the, the plays down the stretch. And, and everything, so so I, I think they're a good team. They're 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 a dangerous team, and I don't know how it plays out. But uh, as Chris was just telling me, the only thing that's not decided yet in the in the in the pairings for the tournament are the one and two seed because you could still have that change, and then the nine and ten. Is that right? Because you could have Oklahoma State and West Virginia still change based on whatever. So, uh, uh, but other than that, it's pretty well locked in. But yeah, you you stop and think about. Those teams that are playing that first day on Wednesday, man, those are some good teams. Are you starting to see David kind of put it together and, and uh, maybe just build into, it's too early to say maybe a Silvio type finish that Silvio had last year? Well, I hope so. You know, uh, I, I, I get a kick out of you guys when a guy makes two baskets and now well, he's not really starting to put together, he's on a, pro, on a roll. But I thought David played by far his best game offensively against OU. He scored 18 points. I thought they were real points. Uh, uh, there wasn't a lot of garbage to it. Uh, I mean, he, he played the way that we, we hope he'd play. But when you say string it together, to me that's like, you know, having a good, you know, two or three weeks or whatnot. But I, I do think he's on an uptick without question. Bill, how would you compare uh, where Ochai's at uh, maybe a month ago when he had a couple 20-point games and, and the shots are not falling, but how's his confidence and, and what do you expect from him? I actually think that what he did at Oklahoma State, he goes three of eight from three when he hadn't made a shot in a week. And then and, and then in Norman, although he's one of seven, they were all good looks, all shots we wanted to take. So I think his confidence is pretty high. I think, you know, he hadn't shot the ball particularly well. I think it was four of, uh, I mean, what's that, maybe four of 15 last week, uh, which is nothing to uh, write home about. But that's pretty good for a young kid to hit off 15 threes in, in two games. So I think there's some positives to that, uh, that he's playing the right way, even if the ball's not going to the basket. As, as much. Another streak uh, coming up this this Saturday, three head coaches at Kansas that they haven't lost on the last game of the year. Can you just talk about the significance of winning that last game senior day? Well, it won't have as much significance this year, uh, obviously, since we don't have a player. Uh, LeGerald's not going to be with us on Saturday. So, so it, it, it won't have as much significance. The thing about senior day is, to me, is that day, you forget about everybody buys it into it. You forget about uh, your role. You forget about uh, uh, your own personal expectation. You forget about all that, and you make senior day all about the players that are playing their last game. And that's what I tell them all along. Hey, this is this. Hey, hey, do you? You may be getting twenty and ten, but your job is to make sure that he goes out in style. Uh, uh, I've always said that to all my teams, and I think everybody has bought into that because that is their one special day. Uh, but but uh, but you know this year's obviously going to be different since we don't have one suiting up. But but uh, uh, but I, you know I think it, you know, it's, it's great to win your your last regular season game, and I guess we've done it the majority of the time at home. Uh, but you know we've also not done it when we played at other people's senior day. So so uh, it was it's you know it, it, it's a fun day. But to, but this this year will be different than than what it has been in uh, in years past. He won't be there, but can you just reflect on LeGerald's 
three plus years here. And well, he, you know, we won three, we won three leagues and and won uh, ten games in the NCAA tournament in three years. You know, there are not too many players out there in the country that can say that. And he's played a role in, in, in that, and, and certainly he got better over time. And and uh, uh, yeah, people should remember LeGerald in a very favorable way. Uh, no question, and, and you know he's going through some stuff right now, which I think he's doing well, and I, I think it's, I think it's good that that, uh, uh, you know he was able to take care of that and address it, and 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 and, uh, and he's working and, and he's working through uh, uh, whatever personal things that, that that he's got going. So so uh, I'm, ex I'm I'm excited for for him to uh, 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 to be to be better, however that better is, and and for him to you know take this as a as a as a foundation to still go on and do great things after he leaves from here. And, you know, he'll graduate, uh, I think he graduates next week. I think I think he, he finishes his last class next week. He only needed one more to graduate. So I'm, I'm excited for him for that as well. Did, did he become what you thought he would when, when you recruited him? I mean, he wasn't a frontline guy, right? I actually think LeGerald became a lot better mm -hmm. than what we envisioned when we recruited him, a lot better. And then after he got real good, then my expectations of that changed, and, and, and certainly, uh, I thought I think there were times where he did play to that very high level, and there were times where he didn't. Uh, but that's pretty much the case with everybody. Uh, you know, everybody has, you know, good and not so good moments. But he certainly had his fair share of good moments for us. Considering the late date, is he ruled out the rest of the season? Uh, no, but but you ask a good question, Gary. Uh, considering the late date, there's you know he's, we're going on a month. So, so yeah, there's there's not a lot of time to come back, and we're pretty set in what we're doing. But I'm, I'm not going to make that decision right now today because I don't know. But I, I would say with each with each passing day, you know, it's 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 less likely. Bill, just big picture, what do you see from your offense right now? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I you know we haven't shot it well uh, of late. Uh, I actually think that our offense against Oklahoma. Was better than what the stats indicated because we were, I mean, we were like five of twenty-nine from three going into the last two minutes or three minutes. So, so I mean, we got in, in and we got a lot of good looks. We just didn't make them. And, and but we're, in order for us to run good offense, we're going to have to shoot a decent percentage from there uh, because that's what teams are going to give us because they're going to pack the paint. So I think I think it's been average. I didn't think it was a uh, uh, poor at all against Oklahoma State. I thought we got what we wanted. I, I would be much more concerned about the other end than the offensive end. When, when you talk about that, the postseason of the Big 12 tournament as a fresh start for, for all the teams, how does that factor in with your guys? I mean, because so many of your guys are experiencing everything for the yeah, first yeah, time, yeah, right? Yeah. Is, is that, a, is that a, a, a double reset? Is that an extra good thing, or is it just? Uh, I don't know that it's ex I don't know that it's good, negative. I, I, I don't know that there's anything uh, into it. Uh, uh, I, I do think it helps when you have guys from the past that can talk to their guys about uh, uh, what's getting ready to happen. And we've only got two players that even experienced it, and they didn't experience it in a prominent role type situations in Marcus and Mitch. So uh, I think I think it's I think it'll be a good reset for us. I, I you know the, the big I'm, I'm not going to change my position on this because the Big Twelve tournament is important. It's important for seeding for us. It's, it, it, it's not as important as what some people may say it is. Now, that doesn't mean you don't go try to win it in those things, but, but, but the, you know, that, that pales in comparison of the importance of the, of the following week, obviously. Uh, you've coached so many teams that won the Big 12 and they obviously have their different strengths and weaknesses, but any characteristics on this team that you think maybe were the weaknesses that kept them from getting to that level? Uh, well, yeah, I think that there's a... Uh, uh, well, first of all, we haven't played the tournament yet, so it is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm at the regular. Tournament. Okay, okay, so yeah, yeah. so 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 the regular. Yeah, I think there's some reasons. I think I think uh, uh, I think maturity is one. I think uh, uh, I think distractions is another, and you know those are things that that you don't really change. Uh, the distractions we had, I'm not sure you can eliminate those. Now, if it was distractions on. Judgment, things like that, and then that's another thing you can eliminate. But th these are distractions, whether it be health, whether it be uh, decisions made by a third party, whether it be uh, 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 
you know, obviously some personal things. Uh, th those things are, are hard to, 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 uh, to navigate and deal with. So, so I think those are probably reasons why as much as anything. And the other thing is, guys, our, our margin for error isn't what it used to be. I mean, going to win on the road is a huge win. Like going to Morgantown up six with two left, that's what we're going to look back on, or that's what I'll look back on. You know, uh, if you watch Texas play at home or you watch K-State play at home or you watch Tech play at home or Iowa State play at home or, or uh, those schools or Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma's been, you know, a little bit like this, but even though they handled this uh, 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 the other night, they were a really good basketball team the other night. We would have had to play great to win that game. And if we couldn't play great, or to be in that game, we couldn't play great. We had to make them play poorly, and th that's what this team has not done. We, it's not so much how we play; it's how we make other teams play. That 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 probably is the reason why uh, why we, we, we didn't have a better opportunity to win the league this year. To be quite candid, you might have referenced this, but but Ochai said it the other night after Oklahoma. Uh, that when things go bad, guys maybe start trying to go their own way a little bit yeah. more, and and. and yeah individual type stuff have you seen a ton of that i mean is that is all that year long yeah but that's not selfishness right that's leadership and that's intangibles that, that that's i mean who wouldn't say okay if you you're 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 got it's starting to fall apart with your business or whatever and who wouldn't say that they really care about well i i, I know i can fix this and you so you go try to do something to really help everybody else out but when you help somebody out that way maybe it doesn't complement what other people are trying to do Something that that's more what it is. It's 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 uh, relying on each other. Uh, that that I think does come with that does uh, happen quite often with experience. And and some kids are more experienced than others. And I, I look at our freshmen as no longer freshmen. They played enough where they're not freshmen, but still yet yeah, there there's there's some things that that they're going through that's still a first for for most people. What's that say about him that he recognizes it? I mean, is that? Do, do that Ochai recognize yeah, it? Do, do all guys recognize that or not? Uh, I would say no. Yeah. Uh, but Ochai is a really bright kid, uh, and uh, he's probably tried to be as much of a leader as anybody can be. But you know, so you know, without being remotely negative, you know, you got a guy that's played twelve games this year. And, you know, come out of red shirt that wasn't highly recruited. And, okay, guys, now come on, dude, follow me. You know, that, 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 that's a little bit different, uh, but he's trying, and, and, and Devon's trying to do it in his own way. Diedrich, I think, is the best we got, uh, without question, from positive and talking and everything. But even with that being said, we, we you know, I, this, this isn't being negative. We, it, Frank didn't develop that overnight, neither did Devontae. And, and, uh, but, but certainly we, we have potential to have uh, uh, one or two of those guys in our midst, but it's going to take a little bit. What do you attribute to Baylor leading the conference in conference games and rebounding, rebounding margin without Tristan Clark? I, I, Mark Vidal. I mean, he's the best rebounder in our league, uh, uh, best offensive rebounder hands down in our league. And uh, you know, you, you can say Tristan Clark, but uh, Gillespie's had a great year replacing him. Baylor's always been a good rebounding team historically, uh, but but I, I do think that uh, uh, they attack the ball about as well as anybody. And when we played them down there, if I'm not mistaken, Vital have eight offensive rebounds. You guys remember? It was eight, Brett. So, 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 I mean, that's a guy that, that, that uh, we know can hurt you in a lot of ways. He can do damage as one man uh, could on the glass that most teams do. What do you think about maybe the seedings moving forward a little bit? What do you think is the possible range maybe for the tournament for you guys? Like if you finish strong, what do you think you can get to? And, you know. If we if we finish strong, so that would be being successful Saturday and having a good showing in KC. I think the best the best would probably be a three. I, I, I do. I, uh, uh, and I think you know we we could certainly not be a three very easily if we don't finish strong. Nor would we deserve to be if we don't finish strong. But there's a lot of things going for us from, if you look at it from the committee standpoint, at least I think there is. You know, we played 17 games, if I'm not mistaken, Jesse, against Quadrant One. We're 10 and seven, is that right? 10, yep. 10 and seven? And, and that ties for the most Quadrant One wins in the country. Would that be right, Jesse? Yes. One other team has 10. Um, yeah. Okay, and I think a couple of teams have nine. So, so even though our record is 22 and eight, 
we played by far, not, not even close, the hardest schedule in the country. So, so, you know, they've always taken into account that. So uh, uh, I, remember, I remember we played the hardest schedule in the country my second year. Here. We've done, we had, we've done it several times, but my second year here, we played the hardest schedule in the country. And if you guys remember, we kind of fizzled down the stretch. Keith got hurt, fizzled down the stretch, and we got a three seed. When, to be honest with you, the reason we got a three seed is because of the schedule we played. So I, I, I think that will, that will probably help us. But if we don't finish strong, then, then that's off the table. A four could be off the table, whatever, if we don't finish strong. But, but the, the reality of it is, the way I see this, we're not competing for a one or a two. And that's always been the interest level with me going into the tournament where we'd be a one or a two. Uh, and we've been a one eight of the last 12 years, and three of those other years we were a two, and the other one we were a three. So, so you know, you look at it, that, that was kind of the anticipation. When, when, when you're kind of in the boat that we're in with so many schools right now, I think you just try to finish the season as strong as possible and, 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 and not so much hope for the best seed, hope for the best matchups for our, for our respective teams. A, a lot of those wins, with Dope, with Vic. Uh, yeah, they may not count as much. Do you think they should? How, how do you look at that? Like, Oh, well, yeah, they got to count. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they got to count. Uh, uh, you, don't, you don't eliminate something. So, so, so let's say if uh, Michigan State lost to us. So if you eliminate that as a win for us, you eliminate that as a loss for them. I mean, you, you, got, you, got to, you can't do both. Right. So, so, I mean, so uh, uh, I, I think that we'll get credit for it. But I also think that they'll look at – what is your team today and how you have played with your team today? And that'll look at that. So that, that could certainly affect it as well. Coach, uh, maybe this is absolutely nothing, but in, in, for many years now, for a number of years, you, the geographical distribution for your, the tournament hasn't been very far ranging. Right. Not we, we, haven't, we, haven't, uh, we haven't gotten on a plane in a long time. <laughs> you know, for last, 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 time, last game out of the summer time zone was a little bit so. I mean, if, if we got screwed on that. <laughs> so, so. If, it comes to, if it comes to pass that you're a three or four seed, maybe you go someplace different. Can that be a freshener, just seeing something? Yeah, yeah, I think so. You, you know, we're, we're t we should be talking about this next week because I'm sure we'll do this next week as well. But, 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 the, but the, the reality of it, of, of it is uh, where they send us is good. They send us close, fans, easier, all that stuff. That's good. If they don't, that's fine too. So, so sometimes you're, you're better off being away from any potential distractions and that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, but look, our people, they do a great job in, in eliminating the distractions best they can, uh, regardless of where we play. So to be candid with you, I've always looked at, man, wouldn't it be great to go to Wichita and and and, and, and move from there or whatnot. This year, what what is it? Uh, is it Des Moines and Tulsa yeah. kind of the closest? It'd be great to be at either place. But if we're not, you know, welcome to the real world. I mean, so because we, we've, we've had it pretty good.